bringing you a message titled Obedience Brings Blessings. O so the asem a watu di ese city e di insura eba. Obedience brings blessings. City e di insura eba. Number 55. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his way, what glory he chase on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, with all who we trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the sky, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt, not a fear, not a sigh, not a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he richly repay. Not a grief, not a loss, not a flound, not a loss, but is blessed if we trust and obey. But we never can prove the delight of the Lord until or on the earth day. For the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet or we will walk by his side in the way and what he says we will do and where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Oh 
Father, I thank you once again. I give glory to your name. Thank you for all the testimonies we had. Thank you for the doings in the lives of your church. Thank you for bringing us once again. You have brought us to feed us. And Lord, you are telling us this day blessings, obedience brings blessings. And Lord, obedience brings blessings. And you ask your people in the time of old. What does the Lord require from you, Israel? But to serve the Lord with all your heart. With all your strength and spirit. For that is the whole duty of man. To serve the Lord. And serve the Lord. And obey the Lord. And if you obey the Lord. We will enjoy the land. And if Adam had obeyed you, the Lord will not be in trouble today. And as you spoke to Adam that day, so we are going to speak to us again. To obey you. We will obey you. It will be well with us. Therefore, Lord, I pray that we circumcise our hearts. Lord, circumcise our hearts. Lord, our hearts, Lord, cause us to obey you. Can't man yet be yet sit here, man. Eat the fruit of the land. A man yet be yet the assassin. Let your spirit walk, O God. My own home, my own home, my own home. We can't persuade any man. Ah, and for you, 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 Yes, say you basically that we don't need to compel anybody. We don't need to coerce anybody. That we should willingly obey. That we might be well with our soul. Have your way, O God. Even this day, Lord. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Shall we be seated? I'm going to read you the text from where the message is coming. I will not read in Baracla because we want to conserve some time. So I'm reading 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You follow me as I read. And I'm reading from uh, NIV translation. I'm reading from NIV translation. Okay, NIV. Because the weddings appears to be clearer, clearer than King James versions. But uh, they are all the same. If you say a no more in some no a dead ye a thing, King James dear no. So I read. For though I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our fathers were all under the crowd, and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses, in the crowd, and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock and that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered over the desert. Now, these things occurred as an example to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be adratas as some of them were, as is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in pagan uh, rivalry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not taste the Lord as some of them did, and we are killed by snakes. 
and do not grumble as some of them did, and were killed by destroying agent, angel. These things happened to them as an example, and we are reading down as warning for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you. It say what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to read Romans chapter 15, verse number 4. Romans 15, 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4 reads, For everything was written in the past, was written to teach us, so that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Na bibiera a watre ato hono watre amanye enchechre ese yemfa boaseto ene twere ensem no emu awrechechre enya enidaso so the message says obedience brings blessings ya asem no ni tri echre se e siti e di nshraba and paul the apostle was not there when the incident you were referring to happened and uh, now Osman for Paul, now on you all every hour in summer na ACC ACC yeah. But the conclusion was as a result of disobedience, all this sin happened happened to them. Na and no more I as one day ah one more a year in the end of the ACC you know at two or more. And so he was saying, I will not have you to be ignorant. Ain't you know or say me per se me money. Of what happened to your parents? And a number of them left Egypt. And going to the promised land. But the majority of them perished. And they began to enumerate what they did that made them to perish. When he was writing to the Romans, he said that all things that were written at four times, they were written for our learning. They were written for our learning. That we, through the comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now, if we go to Hebrew chapter 3, from verse 18 to so chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 he said who were those people that God was offended with who were those people that couldn't enter into the rest of God he said because although that were laborious those that could not obey those that could not listen although they left Egypt but they perished they couldn't read the promised land therefore he said we should be careful let the promise that have been made unto us we will not realize it this message I've decided to divide it into series I want to see how far we can go today but it's a serious warning and I pray that somebody should listen to me it's a serious warning Paul ended up by saying, Let him that think that he is standing take heed. After telling us what happened to the people, let him that think that he is standing strong take heed. Let his fall. 
But he gave an encouraging statement. There's no temptation taking you that is not common to men. There is no temptation you are going through that somebody has not gone through. There is nobody that is not tempted. But God will make a way of escape. God will not allow a temptation that you cannot be to come upon you. Which means you can endure. Which means you can escape. Which means if you take heed, you will eventually get to the end. But because many people are not taking heed, that's why we are talking to you. Now listen. When Israel were in Egypt, they stayed there for many, many years. In fact, about 430 years. That's what they spent there. And they dealt with them. They saw Egypt. They saw all their idols. They saw everything. But when God came to deliver them, and eventually they were delivered, as they were approaching the promised land, they have not reached there. And Moses called them. And Moses said, Hear what God said. He gave, he gave them the Ten Commandments. He gave them other commandments. As you enter into this land, you have to obey God. So that we enjoy the land. But if you refuse to obey God, so this is what sort of will happen to you. So you have a choice. You have a choice. You obey. So you'll be blessed. If you refuse to obey, you take the punishment. If you refuse to decide, you have already decided. Are you following me? Indecision is a decision. If you decide that you will not obey God, by your action, you have decided to take the consequence of not obeying. So you can be in an intra ground. There is no intra ground. Sometimes you hear God say, I call heaven and earth to join before you. That I have saved life and death. Walk in light. So that you might live. If you refuse, you take the other side. The Bible says, cause costless shall not come upon you. In other ways, anything you are doing has a consequence. It can be negative. It can be, it can be positive. That is the truth. No man can mock God. God is God. So you find that that obedience is the key to blessing. Blessing from God. If you obey God, you will enjoy God. If you refuse to obey him, you see the other side of God. If you obey your parents, it will be well with you. You will live long. They will save you from sorrows and so many things. If you refuse to obey them, your life can be cut short. 
If you obey your master, after serving him, he will settle you. You will start well and then confer blessings upon you. But if you refuse to obey him, where well, you will be roaming around. You may roam around for another 10 years. You will have served for five years. If you are obedient, within these five years, you will be settled. Then you will start life with a good foundation. But if you have a stick neck and settle yourself before five years, you may begin to roam around. And roam around for another ten years. Because you don't have a foundation. If you say, why not papa? In the place of work. If you obey order. Instruction. Promotion will come easily. You will move and move and move. So you find out that obedience is everything. Obedience brings blessings. Like the song we, we, we rendered. That when you obey God, you will know that the ways of God are not hard. And God told Noah what to do, not Noah, Jonah. And, and Jonah refused. Well, you know the story. You know how he ended. There is aspect of that son that is fearful. Don't let God slow you down so that he can get you at Attention. Did you hear me? Don't get to that point. Of God slowing you down so that he can get your ear. Sometimes God carries a megaphone. Do you know that? I said, God carries a megaphone. When he talk and talk and talk. He will use megaphone. That megaphone may be slowing you down. Allowing the enemy to attack you. He is not the one attacking you. But he removes protection. And then the enemy will attack you. And then you will now begin to cry. Probably you will return back to God. But why cry? Why wait for that? Around 1982, 1982, a friend told me that God is too good that he does not need to tow you or bring you down before you can listen and follow. He entered into my ear. I had somebody that God called to serve him. But he refused. And God used every means to make him to obey. He refused. And one day, I don't know where he was going. He had accident. And his two legs were broken. And he began to cry. Uh, uh, say, so, oh, so. say, God, if I walk again, <laughs> anywhere you send me, I will go. <laughs> anywhere you want me to go, I will <laughs> go. <laughs> you see me? <laughs> I don't want it. Uh, uh, so, no, Did you hear me? <laughs> I don't want to hit a rock. <laughs> Then I now, begin to, I now begin to look for God. God. God is so good. But if after talking to you, and you are stiff-necked, you will allow some calamity to come your way. As a result, as a last resort, the Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 1, the Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 1, he that is being worn and he hardened his neck, Suddenly he shall be destroyed and that without warning. And I want to tell you that it is possible to obey. 
Did you hear me? He said decision. Someone can decide. I will obey. It is possible. And the grace of God will help you. For the Bible said, Bible the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us, denying every ungodliness and worldly loss, we will live soberly and righteously in this present life. So it is possible to obey God. Because of the grace of God. And Apostle Peter said, Grow in grace. Grow in grace. As you begin your journey, don't let your life unto Christ. Bend your neck and begin, begin to follow. No one that the Bible said that we we'll have sheep and we we'll have goats. The sheep Belong to Christ. Good belong to Satan. But unfortunately, people come to God and fail to have repented. But they refuse to be sheep. They remain good. These are the people that perish in the wilderness. So I will talk about three areas of what happened in the wilderness. So when Paul was saying that our fathers were under the crowd and under God's Leadership and guidance. You may need to understand what is the meaning of our fathers we are under the crowd. Under the pillar. What is the meaning? As they left Egypt and enter the wilderness. Wilderness. The moment they enter wilderness, crowd appeared and suspended in the air. Listen to me, crowd appeared and suspended in the air. And everybody could see the crowd. And they, were, they were about three million people in the wilderness. They don't have radio. Or intercom. Or, or telephone. Or any of these social media. It was not there. Why are you going to control 3 million people? How will you direct 3 million, million people? How will you then know that it is time for us to move? Do you think about 3 million people? How will they know time to stop? How will they know time to, to continue? And God raised a crowd. And that crowd became an instrument of guidance. When the crowd suspends, they know God is saying everybody retire. No movement. When the crowd moves, they will know God is saying keep moving. As Moses was directing, they were going. So God was their leader. And he was leading them through the instrument of crowd. And everybody was attached to the crowd. Everybody was looking at the sign from the crowd. 
The crowd may stay for one hour. The crowd may stay for two days. The crowd may stay for one week. The crowd may stay for six weeks. The crowd may stay for six months. The crowd may stay for one year. So there were occasions they will stay for one year. All they know is hook to this crowd. The they were under the crowd. They were under the leadership of God. They were under the leadership of Moses. You, you, you dare not say we are wasting more time here. You dare not say why are you keeping us here for one week? The crowd is the leader. Everybody follows. They were baptized unto Moses. What does it mean to be baptized unto Moses? To be baptized unto Moses means they were submissive. They, they submitted to leadership and guidance of Moses. Just like the Bible said, a woman should be submissive Unto the husband, as the church should be submissive unto Christ. They submitted to the instruction of Moses. They were baptized unto him. Moses was carrying everybody, you know, on his chest. You dare not refuse what Moses said. If you refuse what Moses said, you are detaching yourself from Moses. And as you detach yourself from Moses, you will perish. Just like Jesus said, I am divine. You abide in me. As the branch will abide in the vine. Don't be detached. If you are cut off as a branch, you will dry up. That's what was saying. You baptize unto Moses. As you are baptized unto Moses, Moses will take the risk. Of carrying you and leading you. Moses will be accountable for your soul. Not only that Moses will be accountable. Say, do not offend him so that he shall be well with you. Apart from that, be baptized unto Moses as we get baptized unto Christ. When we are baptized unto Christ, we are baptized unto him unto death. It means we are submitted our life unto Christ. When you repent, you submit your life unto Christ. As you submit your life unto Christ, then you become a child of God. Then you go to water. Water is a symbol. You would have been buried. But because you have to continue to live, he takes you to water, bury you in the water. As we bring you out, we bring you out in a newness of life. What is the implication? The implication is that a Christian should be someone that is submissive. Someone that has accepted the death of Christ. That is why the scripture says, Reckon yourself to have been dead. These are the meanings. Under the crowd. Baptized. Unto Moses. As they explain the meanings. Let me read a few scriptures I'm able to read. In uh, Exodus chapter 13. 
If you must say, woman, and you're tossing me, no, Exodus, no, a children me in San Exodus chapter 13, let me read verse 21 to 22. Okay. Exodus 13, 21 to 22. Okay. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar or crowd to guide them on their way, and by night, a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or night, neither the pillar or crowd by day nor the pillar of fire by night. It is in front of the people. And 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 So you find out that the crowd is not only guiding them, but was also a protection. Because of the scorching sun, the crowd gives them a kind of, uh, you know, uh, protection against the scorching sun. She said, eh, Samu no kum no, na nye se edi wo ome ni ma ekeke wo, na emo no e bo wo on shi bain, e bo wo on bain, se di ebe ye, e na, o tanfu nu hun wo. In the night, an ajue, a pillar of fire will come out. Ah, na, eh, adane e ja, pillar of fire. Covering the whole congregation. What was the work of the pillar of fire? It's also guiding them. Because if he stops, they know that the Lord is saying no movement. If he says, Now, as the fire is there, the fire is also driving all dangerous animals. As they see the fire, they are, they are, they are, they are running. And protecting them, guiding them, preserving them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In number, number chapter nine. I want to read from verse number fifteen. Numbers chapter 9 from verse 15. Number a train crown to show a drunum. I will read in English alone because of time. He says, On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, was set up, the crowd covered it from evening till morning. The crowd above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The crowd covered it at night. It looked like fire. Whenever the crowd lifted from the, above the tent, Israelites set out. Whenever the crowd settles, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out. At his command, they encamped. As long as the crowd stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in the camp. When the crowd remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the crowd was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at the command, they would set out. Sometimes the crowd stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the crowd lifts, lifted, they set out. Whether the crowd stayed over the tabernacle for two days, or a month, or a year, the Israel or Israelites will remain in the camp and not set out. But when, the, when it lifted, they will set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped. At the Lord's command, they set out. The Lord's order in accordance with his commandment through Moses. So you can see they obey the Lord through Moses by the movement of the crowd. And anybody that disobeys 
gets into severe punishment. Iti no omu di emrano echi ewa kwa imbe so se omu ye siti edi ama mose if you say obi piera a wanye siti eno sa nipano obeira. In Hosea chapter 12. Yen fanko Hosea etre dumye no. Hosea chapter 12. Hosea etre dumye no. Let's see what the laws said and relate it to the story that I'm telling you so that you can see the import of obedience. Hosea chapter 12, verse number 13. He says, the Lord used prophet to bring Israel up from Egypt. By a prophet, he cared for him. And by Israel And Can you listen? Hosea is referring to what happened when they were in the wilderness. He said, by a prophet, they were brought out from Egypt. By a prophet, they were kept. Most of the time, when you hear a prophet, your mind will go to prediction. You know what I mean by prediction? Someone trying to tell you about future. Someone trying to tell you this and this and this will happen. There is much more than that. A prophet is somebody that is telling, the, telling you the word of God in order to stabilize you. A, a prophet is somebody that is given to show you what and what and what you will do in order to live a good life. In that sense, your pastor is a prophet. In that sense, your leader is a prophet. In that sense, your father is a prophet. In that sense, your mother is a prophetess. What is their works? To show you danger. What is their works? To show you things to avoid. What are their works? To help you to live a godly life. To save you from danger. There is a way that is similar to right unto man at the end of destruction. The Bible said, He that disobeyed father and mother, let him die the death. Bible said, Yo, yes, what did he or mommy or papa no more? Oh, 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 oh. And in the time of old, when you are disobedient to your parents, after several warnings, they will bring you to the public. And they will stone you to death. They will stone you to death. Your father is the first God you saw. Likewise your mother. They have seen it all. They have seen it all. And that's why they are guiding you and directing you. If you listen to him, if you listen to them, your life will be long. I know a young man who went, who went and took his father's car and then, and then, and then entered into the highway and cried the vehicle without the knowledge of the father and the mother. They were three students and they perished. When your mother said, don't go out, you may not know that there is danger somewhere. So they became a war unto you. To protect you. To save you from danger. When a woman is going out. 
And tell the children, don't move out from this compound. As a little child, with a little mind, you may not know that kidnappers are moving around. You may not know that rich white people are moving around. So long as you remain in that house, you won't see the danger ahead. You won't see the problem ahead. And so your father is saving you. Your father is saving you. Oh my missus. They say, don't do this, don't do that. You are doing your neck like this. I won't agree. I won't agree. You will know that there is something they are preventing for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the same way. Your pastor is a, is a prophet. He has seen many things. And from the weight of experience. Your pastor is not telling you. Your pastor is not telling you. Don't go this way. Don't go this way. Don't go this way. As a young mind, you want to devote, but you don't know what they're serving you. I want to show you something in the Bible. If you like, read it every day. Did you hear what I said? Read it every day. Because this is what has saved me. Sometimes we say, devil, devil, devil. Let me tell you, if you listen to God, I say most times we say devil, 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 devil. Let me tell you. If you listen to God, the devil will fire away from you. you hear me? The devil will be very far away from you. Many temptations will not near you. You know why? When the temptation is 20 kilometers, you have seen it here. What did the word of God say? The righteous man see trouble afar off. And do what? And dodge it. And escape it. But a fool. Simple. If you obey the word of God, you will know that God is so good that He has made provisions for us. Psalm 119. I've been reading this scripture from time to time. I try to read it and explain it because it's a great scripture indeed. Read it every day. Psalm 119. I'm reading from verse number number 98. Are you there? Look at what he said. Thou, through thy commandments, in plural, has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I say, Womra in Samno, I am a young Safo, a cinema my town for now or me da. Are you here? Moiwaha, or have you gone home? And I'm a coffee, Muniha, see here. And what I saw today, the Bible says, Be as wise as who? Serpent. Bible says, More when it is to say, Why or serpent is commended for wisdom. Ain't you know just say or what? Yeah, they know age now. Try nyansa. Because something can be in a place for a long time waiting for something. If you say or what? Or bet me a woman or a she baby. Ah, na osha ho. Serpent can sneak in without you knowing it. And now or bet me a woman who so a room a bra woman. And serpent has great patience. And now or what? Or what? But she pa. It can wait for any number of days. But God is saying, you can be wiser than serpent. How can you be wiser than serpent? Through thy commandments. 
through thy commandments. And I'm umrasu. That's Satan that is wise. Sa o wana an eni atinu. Become wiser than him. Eh, wo when you betsi asinu. How will it happen? Eh, kwen ben so ne betsi. If you obey the instructions. Se wunya ye siti edema ashedi na. Of your parents. Ma wa wufu. Of your pastors. Ana wa sofu. Of your leaders. Ana wa kendi fu. You listen to word of God. Wu tiye nyami asam. And do what word of God says. Na wu ye de nyanku po asam o kan. You will see danger very far. Eh, ube wu amani. Before he reaches you, you have seen it, and never to know what you have escaped. Simple. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. But when you block your ear and close your eyes and refuse to obey authority and refuse to pay people that you should obey, the enemy will get at you. It's as simple as that. Now, how do you connect it? All scriptures we are reading for our admonition for correction for rebuke that you might be thoroughly furnished all good works all scriptures from Genesis down to Revelation they are reading for you to study to learn lessons to run away from what you run away all scriptures all the things that are written at four times they were written for our learning God said to, Moses, to Joshua, meditate upon this scripture day and night. And he said, Dear in life, dear in life, dear good success. The word of God is complete. You obey it. Take it. Then you will be a wise man. Not only a wise man. Look at the next verse. Verse number ninety-nine. And see what he said. Psalm one one nine. Verse ninety-nine. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. Become a, a, a wise man. Look at verse 100. I understand more than the ancients because I kept thy precepts. Can direct people that are 20 years, 30 years ahead of you. You can direct them to the end of the world. You can direct your grandfathers. Because of the knowledge of the word of God. Because of taking the word of God. Because of obeying the word of God. You live above your age. You know more than your equals. Because comes from God. And taking the word of God means taking wisdom from God. And then you can, you can go far in life. When I see some young men, I'm particularly some of my age, not the young men, but people of my age. I grew up with them. They, they refused to listen. At 60 something years, they are still trying to find their bearing. Are you hearing me? At 60 something years, somebody has not been able to know where he's going. Somebody is still roaming about. As is something yet. Somebody is still begging. When I see it, my heart will want to break. You know why? At least at the age of 16, I brought myself under some 
old men. If I, if I front 10 years, I served, I served about old, five old men. Like like the in level of my grandfather. And I learned great wisdom from them. Are you hearing me? When I go out to serve as an apprentice, I had it tough. Did you hear what I said? I had it tough. At the hand of the person that trained me. My mother trained me. These five old men trained me. I went to serve as an apprentice for six years, eight months. I got another level of training. When I became a Christian, I was under the man of God consistently for about 28 years. So, I am prepared for life. I can go anywhere. I can live anywhere. I have seen up, I have seen down. The training that I have received is taking me that I can live anywhere. I have, I have interacted with so many people. It's a great privilege. So when you are talking with me, by the time you make two, three statements, I know where you are going. Simple. That's what we are talking about. Listen. Bring yourself down so that you will be taught, you will be guided, you will be helped so that you can prepare yourself for future. And those that refuse to listen, they will hit rock. I don't want to be specific. There are people we have, we have tried to guide and direct and tell what to do. They refuse. Many of them have cried. I'm not rejoicing because it is my labor that has been wasted. But if you allow us to pilot your ship stay, stay by step, step by step, we are guiding you, we are directing you, and then you'll be stabilized in life. Blessings. 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 Those that refuse to listen pay the price of disobedience. I've told you being baptized. The meaning of it. Very simple. When you're baptized, you are simply saying, I submit. To submit is a willful act. We are not praising you. It is expected that you should submit willingly. Not by, not by force. If anybody said, I have accepted Jesus. It means you have accepted to follow him. In Luke chapter 9, verse number 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke at what the word of God is saying. Luke 9, 23. And he said, there, he says there, and he said to them all. Oh. And he said to them all. Everybody, whether white or black, say to them all, what did he say? If any man will come after me, that word if, any man will come after me, say if, say if, say if, say if, say it's a conditional statement. Not by force. He said, I am not forcing you. But if you are interested in me, if you love my kingdom, if you want to follow me, what did he say? Look at the next word. 
Let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily. Not And follow me. No only me. Christianity is not by force. Christo Serving God is not by force. It's a decision. Two kingdom. You either pick one or the other. Two ways. Blood way. Two kingdoms. The kingdom of God. And Jesus is the head. The kingdom of Satan. Satan Lucifer is the head. You are to make a decision. Each one you follow will cost you something. Jesus said, if you follow me, Jesus said, deny yourself. What do you need to deny yourself? Prefer me to any other person. Prefer me to your father. Prefer me to your mother. Prefer me to your wife. Prefer me to your children. Take up your cross. What does it mean to take up your cross? Be ready to accept the responsibility that following Christ will put on you. The demand of following Christ. If you are not ready for it, go your way. No problem. Don't waste your time. Go and serve Satan. After you have served him, you take your pay. Believe you, you say you want to follow Christ, submit unto him. When you submit unto him, by repentance, and after you are repented, we take you to the water, and the public will see you. And this person has submitted on the cross. Instead of burying you outside, you bury you in the water. What it means, it means you have soaked yourself to Christ. You have accepted Christ. You have accepted the reproach. You have accepted every other thing that you follow it. And willingly if you are not willing, go and serve who you want to serve. No case there. So you find that that submission is from the mind. It's a decision. I have seen many people that came to cry, but they never submitted. We told them as we told them. They are in the church. They behave like goats. You know the character, you know the behavior of goats. I can describe to you. If you, if you, if you, if you take one goat to the market, with rope. Before we reach market, you will know. You will know, you will know, you will, you will be sweating. Sana wa, odi apa nchiva kubedru e jasono. Because if you pray, the goat will not agree to follow you. If you say apa nchiva, um, please say obedu echi. The goat will announce to the public they want to sell me. Apa nchiva de bi obedu yemu say yeko tomio. Me wura ko tomio, ogo tomio. Whoever that cares, come and come and come and redeem me. You you pay biya ame chimi o yeko tomio. The goat is stupid. Yes. I just I said, I remember the story my master told me. Oh, say, okay. I said, yeah, new rock catch. Two no. free goats. The master, oh, say, who did they were man. crossing a bridge. Oh, say, uh, and they uh, came uh, to the me center me. of the bridge. And now, almost a child. And this one said, You will not pass here. Oh, do a bridge. And the other one said, You will not pass here. They said, Me for her. They began to hit themselves. Oh, yes, oh, 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 you see sheep. Now, they can be one thousand. Uh, one small boy. Uh, is taking them out. Uh, bringing uh, them in. Uh, when one is uh, in the front. Uh, going. Uh, the uh, rest uh, we follow. Or uh, you don't see them. If it's, uh, 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 they don't give trouble. 
bother. When Jesus said, I know my sheep. And it is that Jesus said, me They hear my voice. And they follow me. And they follow me. And I almost did my sheep. They don't argue. They they don't fight. Fight. They are humble. They give the instruction. They, they take the instruction. So if you are in the church and you see a goat, you are in the wrong place. You are in the church. And then you are in the wrong place. So some people followed Moses. Let me tell you the mystery of what happened in Egypt. The last, the last thing that happened, God said, kill a lamb, spill the blood on, the, on your post, the post of your door because the angel of death will pass in the night. And any door where there is no blood sprinkled, the angel of death will enter there and kill the firstborn. They, they, they had it and obeyed. But many of the people that were inside that house, some were thieves, some were immoral, some were very wicked, some were immoral, some were very wicked, some were very wicked, some were Inside that house, there was a broad sprinkle. And now, the angel did not bother to know the people that are inside the house. Is anybody following me? The angel didn't bother to know who and who are inside this house. Are they thieves? Are they immoral people? Are they wicked people? So long as there is a blood on that house, they are covered. And I'm say, say, one more do you see what obedience can do? But as they move further, something began to happen. The journey became, you know, wearisome. There was lack of water. There was lack of food. The journey was bad. The man began to react. Listen to me. Maybe that's where we continue next time. They began to react. Because of water. Because of food. Because of few things. They forgot. What God did in Egypt. Because man has a short memory. They forgot the ten plagues that finished these people. They forgot that God divided the race through Moses. And three point three million people passed. And the, and, the, and the water stood like a wall. And stood like a wall the other side. And they passed. When they came out, they began to sing a song to watching God to bless the name of the Lord. What a miracle. What a miracle. But as they finished celebrating, a little journey further, there was no water. And the water was called Mara. Bitter water. You know. They began to complain. Moses. You want us to die uh, here? Say you be woo woo are you saying there were no enough burial ground in Egypt? And the upachre You brought us here uh, to and die. Uh, there was shortage of food, no food at all. They didn't know that God had a plan for them. Moses wanted to kill off for hunger. They grumbled. They grumbled. They complained. They wanted to kill Moses. And God will watch out those things. And God said, You people. And then the, the final thing happened. The spy that went to spy the land. 
It wasn't God that told them to go and spy the land. But they were saying, we are not fools. So. We are not fools. So. We will go and check first. And they went and checked. And they saw giants. And they, they saw giants. They said that the habitant is the land is killing the killing the inhabitants. And these were elders of the people. And they are now this into the public. And it was crying all the night. Can you imagine where your fathers are crying? Every one of them. What will you do? People say we are finished. Take us back to Egypt. Ah, we remember Kokumba. We, we, we remember Anamuna. We remember Jenny. We remember all the things we are eating at the joints. And they forgot. And that, that there was a policy. That every son born should die. I don't remember any of those things. Uh, you mean it? Uh, you mean it? Okay. Uh, okay. I've had your prayers. You know what happens? All of you from 20 years go that saw all this thing that I did. You don't enter that land. You, you had despised me. This journey should have been 40 days. It will, now, it will now be 40 years. So that all of you will waste the day. Then a new generation will come. And I will take into this land. That's what disobedience can do. Disobedience, disobedience will delay you. Disobedience will make you not to get what you're supposed to get. And then it will make you to suffer more and more and more. You pay to serve God. You pay to listen to God. These are mommy now. From Lagos. Every Lagos or Bontiso. He went to the to the village. And uh, and was there. And now she serving God. Doing her best. Oh yeah, the obetimia ye bia. Until the man of God sent me to come. Come me say nyame ni pa no esuma no mo ba. And o ba ye no. God saw God saw that I am going to build from where she stopped up. And then you go be who say be bia me me see ko do no as o be to us on the on o be to us. She has a shop. Eh na me wo shop o. Selling. Na me to made here. Mommy, you are going to Kofu Dia. I say, Mommy, who fi ha ako Kofu Dia? Yes, sir. Say, yes, sir. Just like the man of God told me. Say, the enya mini pano ekache na pepe pepe. You are going to Ghana. Oh, go Ghana, oh. Yes, sir. I say, yes, sir. Pray for me. Eh, bumpa ya mami. And my business had gone very far. Ni business na I just say I swap by Edwardsy. I was into so many things. And now, oh, what business? I didn't go hotel to tell my children. And now, oh, you must say all catch in the mouth. I didn't go home to tell my wife. Wow, I'm coffee and can't tell me. In fact, one of the things that broke my heart. Yeah, but poor na kuma kura ni se. When they were packing my goods from the shop. Eh, bro, we almost said the name of the shop. And they were bringing them home. And now, how many did you not be sure if you are? My mother was asking. Ah, na na mami be sad. What's the problem? Ah, na de 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 a sad matter. What's the problem? These are people that see nine one one comes every every two times in a month. Where? And goods are being offloaded. My sisters are coming. Now, what is the problem? I didn't tell anybody anything. I didn't see what I saw. So I closed down eight shops. Settled five people one day. Settled Winded up my business. That could end now or two to a business in a moon. Came to Ghana here. And now Obepium or Ghana. We started in a room. So I see a word dying back from room to a shop. And now Omoko shop was a girl. I 
One day I was crying in the night. God, did you bring me here to waste me? I had 200 pastors under me. I had about 25,000 members in New Lagos. I was into, produ I was into production. I was in agent to some people. But those things were closed down. Mommy from Kofodia. Mommy of Kofodia. Come to Accra. Because I saw where God was pushing him. Now you can see what that obedience has yielded. Now you can see what that Now you can see what that obedience has yielded. Now you can see what that obedience has yielded. Now you can see what that We have a program. We have a program. At Ashaman, Ashaman. our youth and their teachers, they are there now. Yeah, youth, no, any of the teachers, you know, almost all. And then, outside Accra Metropolitan Church, and now Accra had no more, yeah, yeah. We had churches in many, many regions and locations. Yeah, yeah, since here, a man, I'm no, a year, and sorry, oh, me, 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 me. If I did not obey, I sent our no one, yes, it's here. I don't know where will I be now. I'm sure I would have died. Because it is only the will of God that will protect you and preserve you. If you say Which area do you need to obey God? Last Sunday. I went to one of the locations that I, 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 I that were under me when I was in Lagos. I preached a message. Kingdom business. We are in business. And that business and is drawing to draw souls unto God. And I can tell you this is a better business. You can use your money. You can use your talents. You can use your gifts. God may call you on full time. Everybody is not called on full time. But if anything you are doing has nothing to do with God. You are wasting your life. If anything you are doing, you don't have relationship with God. You are wasting your time. First Corinthians chapter 12. From verse 28 all apostles. All teachers. All miracle workers. But God has placed in order people uh, uh, Apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, uh, help, administration, and the rest of them. So you can be somewhere. So you must be in the kingdom business. Sometime last year, I went to another place where I started with three people. And now they have ten parishes. They called me to they call me to come and bless them. I was asking, what do I tell them? To put in my heart. You can't serve God and shrink. You know the meaning of shrinking? You, you, you reduce in size. It doesn't happen. You serve God and expand. I'm only praying for good health. Because I'm expanding. If you say or treachery. I've already planned a program for Togo uh, this month. I've already planned a program for Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, so you can't serve God and shrink. David said, I've been young. I am now growing old. And I have not seen the right choice for second. And Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 26c. He said, 
He that serve me, if any man serve me, he will my father honor. Yesu kanu wo luka sampa no mo e chire se ni a obesu me no onu e na meja beto. Is God a liar? Eh eh Yakubon or your truth. The problem is that you don't know the difference between godly honor and worldly honor. Mo hawa ni se mo hu wiase e mo anidie e ni Yakubon mo anidie no. Worldly honor face away. Na e wiase anidie no e no e fa ba bi. God the honor go from time to eternity. The righteous is of a blessed memory. And God is not a liar. So if you have not repented, I am pleading with you. Repent with speed. Let today be a good beginning. That is how I heard the word of God. About 42 years ago, I heard the word of God. And I grabbed God. And I'm holding him like this. No letting go. It's not in my program. I will follow him on to the end. Job said, Job said, even God, even if God will kill me, oh, I will do what? Yes. Aye. Even if God will kill me, I will serve him. I will not be like Israel that went halfway and begin to look back. Rush and serve God. You cannot regret. If you are already born again, follow God. Ask what will I do for God? What will I do in the house of God? Use your money. Use your talent. Use everything you have to serve God. Night is coming. When no man can walk. When your certificate will be nothing. Everything you have gone down will become nothing. You can only be remembered by what you have done. Then you will not know what it means for God to honor you. There are so many people here that can be missionaries. There are so many people that can be on full time. The problem is if I agree to this church, what will God do? What would he give me? If I agree this thing you are saying, what would God do for me? They are blind. <laughs> the things of God are like gifts. Open it. Let me see what is inside. And God says. I'm not going to open it. You follow. Then later this part will be opened. It's only, only wise people will accept without opening it. That is the meaning of faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that told me to God will believe that he is. And he said, he would have said that diligently follow him. For by it, elders receive good report. If he said, you can't fight with, you can't fight with God. God is looking for you. He's waiting for you. If you answer his call, uh, so, uh, you will know that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Rise up and let us go. 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 Let us Let go. slow you down. To get your get your attention. Don't let God slow you down. And send what did you walk on? So that he can get your attention. A man awaits me and yah dey say we nyan. Follow in. So that you can see the goodness of the Lord. A man awaits me and yah dey say we nyan. Follow in. Follow in. Follow in. 
Follow in. Follow in. Begin to pray now. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your life. God is a paymaster. And he pays. God pays. You can't serve God and drink. You cannot serve God and drink. You can't serve God and reduce. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is not a man. He cannot hire you and will not pay you. He can't hire you and will not pay you. God cannot hire you and will not pay you. You cannot hire you child of God. It doesn't matter how long you have been a child. But you know you are not a child of God. And I want to become a child of God. It begins with obedience. Accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. 
Then you become a child of God. Because the Spirit of God will come inside you. Then you become born again. So if you want to be a child of God, as we bow our heads, lift your hand up. Who will pray with you? The Spirit of God will enter inside you. Then you become a child of God. Then you find it easy to obey God. I'm waiting for those that want to give their life to Christ. Lay your hands on your chest. A simple prayer you will make. That prayer is God, I am tired. I want to follow you. I want to serve you. Then begin to confess your sins. Come to God. Whatever you can remember. That God said you shouldn't do. And you've been doing it. Tell God you are tired. Catch bro. You don't want to continue to live in disobedience. It has not paid you anything. Therefore, confess it unto God. And look unto Jesus. Who died for you. And then ask Jesus to enter into your heart. Now and change you and give you a heart of a lamb so that you can become obedient pray this prayer after me heavenly father I lift up my heart unto you I've heard your words and I know that I've not been a child of God. I want to be a child of God. I want to start obeying you so that your blessings will come upon me. Therefore, Lord, change me. I can't change myself. Change me. Cancel my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the grace to follow you from now to the end of my life. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart from this day. Enter into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I want to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know you have done it. In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray for you now. Father in heaven, you say we should go and preach the gospel. Whosoever that believes shall be saved. Lord, your word has gone out. And you say your word shall not return to you void. And scriptures cannot be broken. We can't persuade you. Because you are already persuaded. Your word said. Whosoever. Oh, shall call upon the name of the Lord. It shall be saved. Behold these men and women. That are calling upon you. And you said, and I will see. You have no pleasure in the death of a sinner. Rather than letting repentance. Oh Lord, as many that have come to you in repentance, Lord, save them. In Jesus' name. Break the power of sin. In Jesus' name. Then the grace to serve you from this day onward. In the name of Jesus. Thank you very, very much. I know you have answered. In Jesus' name. I pray. pray for the second set of people. You want to obey God from this. Every Sabrin. 
Don't worry whether you will suffer anything. Make up your mind. Say, I will follow God. I will serve God. I have seen that obedience brings blessings. Those that are sitting down and sleeping, I don't know whether we come oh, back to God. I have seen that obedience brings Put your hand on your chest or your head and I say we think so. if you have made up your mind say, wow, wow, to obey God. You don't want God to slow you down uh, so that he can get your attention. You, you want to obey God. Put your hand on your chest and pray after me. Uh, Heavenly Father, I come to you to take this decision. That from this day, I want to obey you. I have seen that obedience brings blessings. Why brings us brings us problems. But Lord, I have resolved from this day to obey you. Even if the situation is difficult, you will give me grace to obey you and to serve you. Thank you, Lord. I am making this decision this day. I wouldn't want you to slow me down. But I want to obey you. Thank you, Lord. From today, I will obey. In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray for you, my Father and my God. Obedience is possible. It is possible for somebody to obey. It is possible for someone to follow. Therefore, gracious Father, as many that have decided to follow you by obeying you, Lord, I am praying that you bring them to another level of life. In the name of Jesus, bring them, Lord, to another level of experience in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring them along. Lord, them nearer unto you. Reveal yourself unto you unto in the name of Jesus. Let them abide in your Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let them see that something God is sweet in the name of Jesus. From this day, O Lord, let them enter into another level in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. I am making the last prayer now. Whatever is your burden, whatever that is the load in your heart, Jesus said, come unto me. I will give you labor and heavy lady. And I will give you rest. There's nothing the Lord cannot do. There's no situation uh, the Lord cannot do. I don't know the bedding in your heart. Maybe you associate all the burdens. Lay your hand on your chest. Or your head. Begin to tell the Lord. Something that is bothering you. Something that is worrying you. That load you are carrying. This one now, a son to point onto the Lord. Ah, yes, who she go around. Tell the Lord to see you. Catch a ready so on who tell the Lord that you are in his house. Catch a ready so what if you and the house of the Lord is house of refuge. And then you may fear a year, be a agent, tell the Lord to visit you. Catch a ready so mess away. Tell the Lord to touch you. Catch a ready so friend is a make a way. There's nothing God cannot do. I did be anyone who go to me yet. And he invited us. And now what to suffer? You should come unto him. I say, I'm running chain. Therefore, precious Father, God of heaven and earth, you cannot invite us and leave us like that. As our faces are different, so our needs. You know the embedded in the heart of every man. You know the pains in the heart of every woman. 
You know what is disturbing the man here. Lord, as I stretch my hand, I stretch my hand. Let them begin to receive relief. Let them begin to get attention. Let them begin to get attention. righteous Father. God that are sick, Lord. Those that are sick, Lord. Those that are sick, Lord. Let their hand move now. And to where they are, oh God. Oh, believe them now. In the name of Jesus. Because by the strength of Jesus, we are healed. They are their healing now. In the name of Jesus. Receive their healing now. In the name of Jesus. All those that are healing like this. All those that are having pains in their heart. Oh, my father. Give your pain be released. Let the Lord be released. Let the Lord be released. By you, I don't say well. You are not better than every woman. Oh, my father. Lift all the burden in their heart. Lift all the pains in their heart. Every man, every woman. in this place. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you because I know you are blessed. I give glory and honor to you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. As they move out this week. Say, God, take them in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of God come upon them in the name of Jesus. Let the angel of hell visit them with good news in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you because I know you have answered in Jesus' name.